Hello, my name is Lauren Hinckley from Gamma Gamma Chapter at Concordia College, and I've been working with Dr. Wiley. The rate at which an analgesic is released from a pill or similar delivery system is critical in alleviating pain. Titus and alginate bioplastics have been investigated as a potential drug delivery system. Titus and alginate bioplastics are an alternative for petroleum plastics that are studied extensively in the Wiley Laboratory. These bioplastics provide an analog to current analgesic delivery systems and are potentially inexpensive, non-toxic, biocompatible, and biodegradable. Therefore, studies using ibuprofen and acetaminophen needed to be carried out to determine the efficacy of drug release. Through uv vis spectroscopy, we determined that ibuprofen has an optimal absorbance at 220 nanometers and a Acetaminophen is at 250 nanometers. Due to possible overlap from the wavelengths and contaminants, we moved from the UV vis spectroscopy to use high performance liquid chromatography. The HPLC is a technique that separates components of a mixture using a combination of mobile phases and stationary phases. Mixture components are separated on a column and elute at different times, then are quantified by a UV vis detector. I developed a method that separated both ibuprofen and acetaminophen through varying mobile phases. Calibration plots were prepared for both drugs as shown in figures four and five. And these show a strong linear relationship between peak area and parts per million. In order to de detect drug release, the bioplastics had to be made. Chitosin is a derivative from chitin which is extracted from the exoskeleton of crustaceans and is a rigid material. Alginate is extracted from brown seaweed, which is used to introduce more flexibility to the chitosin alginate bioplastic. Bioplastics were prepared with equal amounts of chitosin and alginate, impregnated with acetaminophen and ibuprofen, poured into petri dishes as seen in figure six, left to dry for one week as seen in figure seven, these were then harvested and cut into approximately seven milligram samples and immersed into a series of solutions. The samples were then removed at various intervals to measure release rate, as seen in figure eight. We investigated the effect of increasing solution volume for a constant mass of bioplastic. The data shown in figure nine has been normalized to take into account for the different volumes and calibration plots were used to convert peak area to parts per million. The data shows in figure 10 that the amount of release seems to increase with increasing volume and the volume gets larger. It seems to become constant. We then studied release rates of acetaminophen and ibuprofen at a constant five milliliters of water as seen in figures 11 and 12. We looked at the bioplastic impregnated with both drugs in figure 13. This bioplastic contained an equal amount of acetaminophen and ibuprofen that were contained in each bioplastic studied in figures 11 and 12 to make it comparable. Release rates of ibuprofen increased while acetaminophen was comparable at five minutes. In order to make this data more applicable, a study to show release rates under physiological conditions needed to be done. Here, we collected data at 30 minutes and 45 minutes at two different pHs, RO water at a pH of seven and 0.15 molar HCl at a pH of 1.22, the latter of which is approximately equivalent to stomach acid. At each pH, two samples were collected at each time and analyzed. These data points show that acetaminophen is released more readily in a lower pH. The data was highly reproducible. This is an ongoing project in which further studies will continue to be carried out. One of our present focuses is dealing with a new contaminant which has appeared in our HPLC data with a similar retention time as ibuprofen, which is why the data presented has focused on acetaminophen. Thank you to Sigma Zeta for funding this work under 2019 research grant. Thank you to the Concordia Chemistry Department for the space and analytical instruments for donating the HPLC to the Wiley Teaching and Research Lab.